So now that we've visited the horsetails in the field, we'll take a closer look at them. And this is what the stroboli look like in the spring when they've expanded and are releasing their spores. So here's a sort of magnified view. And what we see is that this is a spiral arrangement. This is a spiral arrangement <laughs> of these um, sort of hexagon shaped umbrellas. And there, dangling off the margins of them, are the actual sporangia. And here they're expanded and they're releasing their spores. It's springtime. Here's a little picture down at the bottom that shows that same thing. And uh, the spores have these attachments called elaters. Really cool. Helps them spring forth. One summer I got intrigued with taking pictures of the insects and other critters. This is a crustacean on the horsetail stems. Here's a couple of them. Here's a tree cricket. Here's a spider. Here on the right is a sow bug, uh, which is the crustacean. On the left is a raindrop with a snowflake. I guess it's a snowdrop. Whatever. There's another type of, there's several species of horsetails in Ohio. And the one that we just looked at is more often called scouring rush because its form is whip-like and not branched. However, there's a really common one that has uh, dimorphic uh, stems, ho uh, holodimorphic stems, in fact, where th there are fertile stems shown here um, that produce the stroboli and have very um, that are sort of short-lived and not branched. Now here next to it is a very young version of one of the vegetative or non-reproductive or sterile stems. And here's a close-up showing the expanded stroboli of this horsetail. Again, these are these sporangiophores that I regard as like hexagonal umbrellas. And then hanging off the margins of them are the um, sporangia. And the entire structure, compound structure, is called a strobilus. And this is what the sterile, vegetative, non-reproductive um, uh, branches look like on this um, very, very common horsetail, which is called a horsetail, I guess, because it looks kind of like a horse's tail. <laughs> I guess. Good idea. Boom. So um, let's move on and learn about a whole other phylum of seedless vascular plants. And these are called lycophytes. There are three types of plants in this group, two of which have moss in their name, which is inappropriate because, hello, they're not mosses, and quillworts, which are really unusual and special plants. They, um, some of these plants look kind of like little pine trees, little or spruce trees, actually, a little more like. Um, and some people must have thought they look like club like mosses because they're called club mosses the clubs in the common name club mosses are these more elongate stroboli and here's a diagram that shows that what the stroboli consist of is very tightly uh, compressed leaves and the axles of which are sporangia the leaf is called a sporophyll and the sporangium is in the axles you know where the leaf meets the stem and that's a strobilus which is the club quote unquote of the club moss so here's the lycophytes here on the phylogeny and there are three types of plants there club mosses spike mosses and quillworts club mosses and spike mosses are fairly similar in terms of what their bodies look like but big difference club mosses are homosporous homosporous they have one type of spore and it germinates to form a bisexual slash hermaphroditic gametophyte with both Antheridia and Archegonia, as do most ferns, and as do um, uh, uh, um, horsetails. Spike mosses, by contrast, are heterosporous. They have sporangia that produce large spores called megaspores that germinate to form female gametophytes, and little tiny um, sporangia that contain little tiny spores that germinate into small um, male gametophytes. And that's called being heterosporous. Quillworts, by the way, are also heterosporous, but they don't look anything like each other. They're kind of, they look like onions. So here's some things about lycophytes. Um, again, like the horsetails, um, these were really prominent 
in the old days, in the Paleozoic era, and some of them form coal. Uh, the leaves are really small. They kind of sometimes look like little spruce needles. And the sporangia may be in a terminal club-like cone. Not always. Now, homosporous and heterosporous. Now that we're officially learning it. Um, homosporous plants are plants that produce spores. They're all alike. And when they germinate, they germinate into gametophytes that have antheridia and archegonia. Homo, meaning the same. Heterosporous plants. They have megaspores and microspores. The megaspores develop into female gametophytes. The microspores develop into male gametophytes. The gametophytes are separate. Um, um, some ferns are heterosporous. Some lycophytes are heterosporous. All seed plants are heterosporous because they have um, um, male spores that develop into pollen and female spores that develop into ovules. And by definition, seed plants are heterosporous. Heterosporous. So here's a diagram that shows the life cycle of a club moss. And again, basically like a fern life cycle, but they don't look like ferns. But a dominant sporophyte that's the thing that you would call the club moss, and a small inconspicuous gametophyte that is physiologically and physically separate from it. But, you know, a stage in the life cycle where it kind of is bryophyte-like in that we have a sporophyte attached to its mother. But the gametophyte, um, which its mother, is withers away. So in this picture of a lycopodium, a club moss, lycopodium, and similar closely related genera, um, notice that this strobilus has... Um, is drawn to have very uniform look to it, with these sporangia all looking alike. And that is a club moss. Here is a club moss. This particular one is called Diphasiastrum digitatum. And it uh, has sort of flattened branches, and it has a horizontal stolon that, from which these other branches arise. And it's uh, got these elevated clubs uh, that are stroboli. Here they are close up before they've released their spores. And here they are um, after they release their spores. Club moss spores are famous for having um, been useful for something. Club moss spores are flammable. You toss them onto a flame, they flash like uh, gunpowder almost. And they were used back in the old days of um, uh, before flash bulbs were invented, before they were like strobes, before they were like really high speed cameras and they were used um, to illuminate flash photography. Let's take a look at a video that shows an old-time use of that, and also that shows a club moss in the, in the woods of Ohio.